Okay, this is anatomy and physiology summer course. This is going to be our first um, video on um, anatomical terminology and orientation. <clears throat> All right. Um, when in using medical terminology, you need to understand what the words are. If you've ever taken uh, medical terminology, then that will help you with this course. Or if you have not taken medical terminology and you plan on it, this will help that. The words are made up of suffixes and prefixes, as you can see. Sometimes more, they have root words, compounding words. Uh, some examples are like right here, gastroenterology, gastro meaning stomach, entero means uh, <clears throat> small intestine, and then ology meaning uh, the study of. So in this case, it's the study of the stomach and small intestine. All right. You'll find footnotes in your textbook. Uh, look for them. They also a terminology guide at the back of the book. Use it to help you understand words. Here's a few more. Um, in the medical profession, you usually uh, you palpate things or palpation. So palp means to touch or to feel. Asian is the process of it. Auscultation. Auscultate is listening to it. So you listen in the process of it. Again, anatomy, Anna and Tom. So the part and the cut. And dissect is similar to that. So these are some examples of, of uh, terms that you'll find in an anatomy and physiology course. It's important to be precise on what you say. So we have some examples here. Uh, the trapezius and the trapezium. The trapezius is a muscle in your back, okay? While the trapezium is a tiny little bone in your wrist. Make sure you're pronouncing things correctly. Again, going back to the suffix, prefix, and the root word. A couple of these words sound similar, so if you're writing them, it really makes a difference. You have the uh, ilium, which is in the small intestine, and the ilium, which is your hip bone, <clears throat> the one, the, the crest you can feel. Pronouncing words also is elephantiasis, is, excuse me, is the disease, uh, as compared to elephantitis is an inflammation of an elephant because titus means inflammation, so an elephant inflamed. Uh, everybody likes that one. Anatomical positioning, this is very important because we are always going, when we refer to uh, anatomy, we always refer to the subjects, not our own. All right, so that's our frame of reference. Uh, this per in this case, the person would stand uh, erect, feet on the floor flat, arms at their side, and the palms facing forward, as well as the face facing forward. <clears throat> uh, Form is supinated when the palms are uh, facing up. So if I stand up right here, I can't quite see. Your palm would be this way. That would be supinated. If we rotate it, that would be pronated. So supinate, pronate, we'll get to that a little bit. But as you see, it, it's on there. Again, normal stances in this configuration, facing forward, feet flat, palms forward. Uh, again, left and right are always the subject's point of view, not your point of view. Uh, and we always refer to positions as if they are in the anatomical position. Even if they're not, we always refer to them as in the anatomical positioning. <clears throat> Uh, some things can be a little confusing, especially when it comes to humans, because um, most of the time we're talking about four-legged animals, and we use a lot of the same terms with humans, but we're two-legged, so that kind of changes it a little bit. Again, here's that pronation, supination I was telling you about. Uh, it works pretty good with hands. When it gets to the feet, it's a little bit different, because then you're talking about Pronating is like this, and supinating is like this on your feet. So there is a little bit of confusion with some of these terms. Uh, anatomy is divided up into planes. We have three main planes, the sagittal, uh, frontal, and traverse. All right, so these are uh, cuts. We um, Sometimes they can be used differently or we can have like a mid sagittal or a parasagittal and so just various areas but it's the three planes again sagittal is going to uh, separate the body into left and right halves the frontal or the coronal plane is going to be into the front or back 
and then traverses into the superior and inferior, or top and bottom. Again, uh, sagittal, frontal, or coronal, and then transverse. And here's some uh, MRI, M <clears throat> MRIs of uh, humans. Directional terms. Uh, it's, again, some can be confusing uh, because most of them are meant for four-legged animals, but we use them on humans. Excuse me, the first example there, anterior is, we're going forward in that direction, but that's also ventral because that's towards the belly. For a human, on an animal, uh, ventral is still towards the belly, but that's not the direction they're going. Anterior, move, the anterior would be the head, which goes going in that direction. And we get a few weirdness with the feet because the top of the foot, which should be anterior uh, as you're standing in the end type of positioning, is actually dorsal. So, yeah, they, they're a little weird at the feet. <clears throat> Cavities of the body are divided into two main portions. You have your uh, dorsal cavities right here, the yellow, and your ventral cavities in the red. We'll name them all a little bit. Uh, your anatomical directions, okay, distal and proximal, these are mainly for your appendages, about how, uh, so you're talking about, again, uh, distal is farther away from where it's attached, uh, proximal is closer to the body where it's attached, lateral is to the side, medial is to the middle, anterior is towards the front, posterior back, superior is up towards the head, inferior is towards the feet or towards the ground. Uh, you can also use the terms cranial or caudal there, just like if you're at the anterior, you got ventral and dorsal. Superficial is closer to the skin or towards the outside of the body, while deep is closer to, is more to the internal portions of the body. <clears throat> and then we got plantar and dorsal on the feet. Plantar is the sole of the foot, the bottom of it, and dorsal is the top of it, your instep. Uh, Anterior and ventral are always opposite the posterior and dorsal. Again, it depends upon where you're, uh, what you're looking at, uh, two-legged or four-legged. Uh, the eyes are always anterior to the brain because your eyes are in the front, your brain's here toward the back. Lateral is to the left or right side. So the axillary, we're talking about the armpits right here, okay, is always lateral to the sternum, which is right in the middle. Uh, so then Another one, your nose is in the middle to your eyes, which are on the side. So you always use these in reference to something else. All right, <clears throat> when you get these uh, terms, always use them in reference. The same with these again, superior and inferior. Superior is towards the head, which means cranial in this case. Inferior is the lower towards the tail, your rear end caudal. You have proximal and distal again, points of attachment. So the uh, the hand is more distal from the armpit, which is proximal to the shoulder. Again, these are all references. Remember to keep that in mind when you, uh, you have quizzes or tests over this. Then you have superficial and deep, again, towards the skin, away from it. Like the muscle, the vice brachii is superficial to the humerus because it sits on top of the bone. It's closer to the skin than the bone is. Body regions. <clears throat> Axials, the head, neck, and trunk, everything right here in the middle. The trunk is uh, the thoracic uh, is up here, Abdo abdomen is lower. Your abdomen can be divided into the uh, four quadrants, uh, right upper, right uh, lower, left upper, left lower. Or if you're an anatomist, 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 yeah, uh, you can go into a, a tic-tac-toe region where you have more, you have hypochondriac uh, regions which are uh, up, up and to the side, you've got a picture coming up, lateral, inguinal, epigastric, midclavicular lines, hyper, uh, hyper, uh, hypogastric lines, midclavicular, so just like I said, it's from the middle of the clavicle, which is this bone right here, comes down, those little vertical lines on it, you have your uh, <clears throat> subcostal lines, so it'd be right below the ribs, all right, and then uh, inter, uh, inter uh, tubercular uh, line, which is the lower, uh, right above the uh, region. You'll see in the picture. 
right. There we go. There's your interturbicular interturbic line. It's a hard one to say. There's your midclavicular line. Here's your subcostal uh, lines. All right. Make sure I got the names right. Here's the names of them. So here's your hypochondriac. Epigastric, so it's above the stomach. Hypogastric, look below the stomach. Iliac or inguinals over here. That's this region. Lumbar, left and right. There's your uh, <clears throat> nine anatomical regions of the abdomen. We also have the body regions of the appendicular. So we're talking about the limbs. Uh, you have your uh, brachium, which is the upper portion of your arm where the humerus is. The anti-brachium is uh, where your forearm is. You got your carpus, your hands, your digits. The lower region, you have your femoral. Your curl is down here where the, the tibia and fibula are. Pedal is your foot. Then we have the tarsals and the digits down there. Again, our body cavities, we have the cranial and vertebral ca uh, canal. For the dorsal cavities, then we have the thoracic and abdominal cavities. Uh, for the uh, and ventral cavities, abdominal pelvic, excuse me. Then we have some potential spaces. Potential spaces are some that are there and aren't there, dependent upon positioning. And we have some sinuses fill into this area also. Body cavities are lined. All right, they have a membrane around them and the membrane that is uh, surrounding the organ itself is called the visceral membrane. You also have a parietal membrane that surrounds the space. So there's, technically there's two membranes for the, each cavity, <clears throat> minimum of two of them anyway. In the brain and vertebral canal, so those dorsal cavities, there's actually more than two and these, are, these membranes are called meninges. Now the next three here are your ventral cavities, the pericardium, the pleura, and the peritoneum. Those we have two because we have the visceral pericardium, which is the membrane that surrounds the heart, and then the parietal pericardium, which is the membrane that lines the cavity itself that has the heart inside of it. Same with the visceral and parietal pleura and visceral and parietal peritoneum. Uh, some regions of the body. <clears throat> this is the, uh, for the cephalic region, the head. You've got your otic, which is your ear, right over here. Your nasal, right through there. Oral is your mouth. Cervical is going to be your neck. Orbital is your eye. Buccal is your cheek. Uh, mental is the chin. You can know these for quizzes and tests. <clears throat> we also have some more. Uh, your chromium is going to be your shoulder up there, axillary is armpit, mammary is your breast, antibrachial, again, brachial and antibrachial, we already talked about those with the carpal, manus, and digit. We mentioned those on the appendicular region. So in the chest, in the thoracic region, you can still have the sternum, you have the pectoral region. Uh, for your abdominal region, you have the umbilical, which is where your belly button is. Uh, inguinal um, is... Uh, near the groin, coxal is the hip, and then you have some genital. These are your external reproductive organs. <clears throat> In the lower regions, uh, femoral is the thigh, patellar is the knee, the curl is the lower leg. Again, there's that uh, the pedal is the foot. We have the dorsum or dorsal at the top, and plantar is the sole of it, and your tarsals are your ankles. The back. So the back of the skull where the occipital lobe of the brain is, that's also where the occipital bone is, so we get that region. Nuchal is the back of the neck. <clears throat> when we get into the skeletal system, you'll understand a bit more. You have your vertebral column, and uh, it's got a, uh, various regions. You have the, the upper portion is the vertebral, then you have the lumbar, and you have sacral right here. Gluteal is your rear end, your buttocks. Perineal is the space between the genitals and the anus, and then the sural is your calf. We have organ systems. Our textbook divides the organ systems up into 11 regions. Uh, other textbooks might break up the lymphatic into lymph and immune, uh, the immune system, but our textbook puts them together. <clears throat> We're going to try to cover all of these this semester, um, some in a little bit more detail than others, but these are our 11 um, organ systems. Know the basics of each one of them. So like right here, 
the integumentary system. The external body covering protects deeper tissue from in injuries, synthesizes vitamin D, uh, houses cutaneous uh, receptors, and sweat glands and oils. The skeletal system protects and supports body. Go through and read about each one of these. There's six right there, and then uh, they, they, there's another six here because they divide the male and female reproductive organs in the separate sections on this. Those are 11 regions. You need to know these. If you have any questions, email me. Uh, I get to them pretty good. I check my email several times a day. Good luck.